Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the season two trailer for HBO's House of the Dragon, a prequel series set about 200 years before the events of the Game of Thrones. The series follows the Targaryen dynasty during the Dance of the Dragons, a Targaryen civil war recounted in George R. R. Martin's novel, Fire and Blood. Season two will pick up after the boys fight over Storm's End that ended season one with Prince Aemon on his dragon, Vagar, chomping Lucerys and his dragon, Arax, Lucerys being the second son of Rhaenyra, who's now pissed and ready to strike back against the Green faction and Alice. I'm going to break down this trailer for what to expect when this show returns in 2024 and just to give everyone a reminder of all the family drama and the factions because yeah it has been over a year and everyone's names sound the same. But before we begin with this to anyone who watches this show but has not read the book Fire and Blood and doesn't know what's coming from now on on this channel all speculation based on events in the book that have not yet transpired on the show I'm going to be moving to the ends of any videos we do on House of the Dragon. I should have been doing that before I'm really sorry that I didn't I, I thought I could be clever with how I worded things to like wink book readers without tipping everyone else off, but I wasn't very good at it. So from now on, just to play it safe, I'm gonna introduce the spoiler dungeon to give people the option to skip the book-based speculation at the end of the video if they want to. But for any like blind theories that have nothing to do with further book knowledge, really just stuff based on the show or history that was already talked about in episodes of Game of Thrones, I think that's all still fair game, but I am still gonna just do my best to make sure everyone's getting the most out of these breakdowns. Okay, season one dashed through the history of the Targaryen family tree, with Paddy Considine as Viserys I, a king chosen by his grandfather, Jaehaerys, at the Council of 101 at Harrenhal, chosen over Rhaenys, the queen who never was. Viserys weds Emma Arryn, who gives him Rhaenyra, but she dies in childbirth with their son, Balon. This sets up a succession concern between Rhaenyra and Viserys' brother, Daemon, Matt Smith. A grieving Viserys gets close to Rhaenyra's childhood friend, Alicent Hightower, daughter of the Hand of the King, Otto Hightower, and Alicent and Viserys marry, which is a betrayal to Rhaenyra. It sets up Otto Hightower as kind of of a pushy, creepy tactician. Meanwhile, everyone in the show is inappropriate. Rhaenyra and her uncle Damon have a really gross relationship. Rhaenyra also hooks up with Sir Kristen Cole, her protector in the Kingsguard, but she declines his proposal to elope with her, and she instead agrees to be wed to Sir Leonor Velaryon, a family of dragon riders from Driftmark and the son of Rhaenys and Corlys Velaryon. Leonor is secretly gay, but Rhaenyra and he have an understanding. Uncle Damon, meanwhile, is married off to Lady Rhea Royce at the Vale, but he murders her in cold blood. Then he marries Leonor's sister, Lady Leanna, bearing daughters Bela and Reyna. Poor Lana ends up undergoing an agonizing labor and she commands her dragon Vagar to incinerate her. Meanwhile, Rhaenyra has given birth to three sons, Jaceris or Jace, Lucerys or Luke, and newborn Joffrey. But since it's kind of an open secret that Leonor is gay and the fact that none of these boys have platinum Valyrian hair, this starts the rumor that they're actually the bastard children of Sir Harwin Strong, which yeah, they are. So we got Damon still with Bela and Reyna. Alicent, meanwhile, has given birth to a son, Aegon, and a second son, Aemond, and a daughter, Helena, who's a bug girl. All of these families gather at Driftmark for Lyanna's funeral, where Aemond, a young boy seeking a dragon, hijacks the late Lady Lyanna's dragon of Vagar for a night flight, pissing off Lyanna's daughters, Bela and Reyna, as well as Luke and Jace. Aemond insults Luke and Jace, calling them bastards, and Luke slashes out Aemond's eye. Alicent, Aemond's mother, is pissed and she lunges at Luke with the Valyrian steel dagger. The two future queens face off with each other, creating a divide in the family. And Rhaenyra and her uncle Daemon marry in the old custom on Dragonstone and set up home there, while Rhaenyra's previous husband of Leonor is thought to be dead, but the show actually takes the step of revealing that he's still alive. Lord Corlys's brother Vaymond appeals to uh, getting up there, Viserys, to be named Lord of Driftmark and calls Rhaenyra a whore and her son's bastards in front of the whole court and Daemon beheads him. Viserys, this episode finally dies, and Alicent hears him uttering among his final words his fears of Aegon the Conqueror's dream, which he had shared with the younger Rhaenyra in the very first episode. Aemon the Conqueror who had this dream to unite all of Westeros against an apocalyptic threat from the north, and this dream will go on to doom his family lineage, as Alicent hears the word Aegon and assumes that Viserys wants her son Aegon to be named. This is why it's a problem that everyone's names sound alike. That's an intentional choice by George R. R. Martin. It leads to all this confusion. So they end up crowning Aegon in the dragon pit, and Rhaenys on her dragon Melis interrupts the ceremony, bursting out of the ground, killing thousands, and rather than ending the war right there by just torching this dais, she decides, eh, and she flees to Dragonstone, and this news causes Rhaenyra to go through a lot of stress, and she delivers a premature stillbirth. Sir Eric, not Sir Arik, I know, I know, delivers Viserys' crown to Rhaenyra, and Daemon crowns her there on Dragonstone. So we have two factions. We have the Greens, that's the Hightowers, through Queen Alicent, her father, Otto Hightower, Alicent's son, King Aegon, and King's always in quotation marks at this point in history, as well as Alicent's second son, Aegon, 
son, Prince Eamond, and her daughter, Bud Girl, Prince Selena. They have a fourth kid, Daron, whom we have not seen yet on the show. He's in Old Town. Allison's creepy foot fetish is Lackey, Lord Laris Strong, who killed off his father in Harrenhal so that Allison's dad could be handed the king again. This is, by the way, Harwin's brother, the true biological father of Jace, Luke, and Joffrey. So the greens are all in King's Landing. Also through Eamond, they have one of the largest dragons, Vagar, and also loyal to Alicent is Sir Kristen Cole. And then the other faction are the Blacks. This include Rhaenyra, her husband slash uncle, Daemon, Rhaenyra's sons of Jace, Luke, and Joffrey, Daemon's daughters, Abela and Reyna, Rhaenys and House Velaryon, and a lot of other dragons. They're just smaller. They're housed at Dragonstone. The season culminates as Rhaenyra sends Rhaenys and her sons, Jason Luke, to recruit houses Aaron, Stark, and Baratheon as allies to the Blacks. Young Luke goes to Storm's End to appeal to Boros Baratheon, but he finds Prince Aemon already there, making a better promise to Lord Baratheon. Luke leaves on Arax through the storm, but Aemon pursues him on Vagar to scare him, but the dragons end up defying their riders and attack each other anyway. Vagar eats Arax and Luke. Rhaenyra gets the news and is pissed. Now, before we get into news for season two, a bit of hot gas from Voss. Season one showrunner and director Miguel Sapochnik, best known for directing the episodes like the Battle of Winterfell and Hard Home from Game of Thrones and the episodes of season one, he is not returning for season two. And this is apparently after HBO refused to let his wife, Alexis Raven, be a producer. Raven was a producer in season one and she appeared in season one as Allison's maid Talia, which, you know, just kind of make of that what you will. Head writer Ryan Condal will be the sole showrunner of this series now. Hopefully the new directors they get to shoot these episodes will do a better job with day for night shooting and not blame our TV settings. So the new footage opens with Rhaenyra looking out over Storm's Inn over Shipbreaker Bay. The storm is cleared for now, but she's surveying this crime scene after Aemon and Vagar's attack on Lucerys and Arax. Now in the Fire and Blood text, according to Mushroom's account, Lucerys's remains are later discovered to have been mutilated after the fact to remove both his eyes, implying that Aemon found the body and stabbed him in the eyes. And there are examples on the HBO series of the show confirming Mushroom's accounts to be canon in some ways, like Rhaenyra's night out with Daemon in the Street of Silk. But the dragon battle in season one showed both these guys begging their dragons to stop fighting. And I just don't think the show version of Aemon would do this. We hear Otto Hightower admitting errors were made in the hours following King Viserys' death. Yeah, and that's the understatement of the year. Aegon the second of the green faction ascends to the Iron Throne, and he's even wearing green with two golden dragons emblazoned over it. We see encampments of Team Black and Team Green, the banners of House Hightower on the march. This could be Chris and Cole's march to Rook's Rest. I'll talk about that later. We see some close-ups of the shields of House Roseby. That's the one with the three red stripes, as well as House Stokeworth. That's the lamb with the golden goblet on the field of green. Both of these houses are loyal to Rhaenyra in the Black faction. Sir Kristen Cole, I think that is? The King's Guard, loyal to the Greens, beheads a lord who's wearing red and black. It looks like one of many different Rhaenyra supporting lords who the Greens will be executing. At the small council table, I love this detail. The marble ball that belongs to King Aegon II spins around its plate but refuses to settle in its place. These attendance plates were a new detail added to the HBO series. And think about it, since all these characters' claims to the throne are tenuous and limited within this interfamily civil war, I just like the symbolism of Aegon's attendance ball refusing to get comfortable in its place. Thank you to Geology for partnering with us to bring you this video and also for giving our audiences exclusive access to their new Try Before You Buy program. You've probably heard me mention Geology before, the 28-time award-winning skin, hair, and body care company recognized in Men's Health, Hype Feast, Birdie, Esquire, Ask Men, and Oprah Daily Grooming Awards. But hey, I get it. It can be tough to change a skincare routine or start a new one. Part of what's nice about Geology is they create simple and effective skincare and hair care routines customized just for you. And now, if you want to try that new routine out before you buy a bunch of stuff, you can. Geology is offering New Rockstars viewers a free trial of their eight-piece skincare set with their Try Before You Buy program. You can experience a new skincare routine risk-free for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back. It's that easy. The set is valued at $139. All you pay today is the price of shipping. And if you order today, get a free vitamin C plus E ferulic acid as a gift. You don't need to return it. That's yours. Just head to geology.com slash new rockstars and get your free trial. And Geology will send you a personalized skincare routine. And if you don't mind me, I'm going to take some Geology and uh, uh, look good for the rest of this video. Aegon is wearing the crown of Aegon the Conqueror, his namesake. That's black, has the red ruby in the center, whereas Rhaenyra wears the crown of Viserys, her father, the one that previously was worn by Jaehaerys at the Council of 101. And I like how Rhaenyra's new dress has two dragon heads on her shoulders. It looks amazing. Now, a quick shot of a silver-colored dragon flying above this new character. The dragon could be Sea Smoke. That was the dragon of Leonor, and that might make this character Adam of Hull. So Adam is believed to be played by actor Clinton Liberty. Adam's brother, Alan of Hull, is played by the actor Abubakar Salim. So Adam and Alan are Dragon Seed, who 
claimed to be the bastard son of Leonor Valarion, but were actually rumored to be the bastard of Corlys. In Fire and Blood, Dragon Seeds are recruited by Team Black to ride some unclaimed dragons, because there's just like a ton of dragons on Dragonstone. That's what we saw Damon doing at the end of season one, just trying to tame some more dragons that are within this lair. And the dragon scene, Adam, ends up mounting Sea Smoke. But the weird thing is about the show is Leonor in the show is not dead. He's still alive. So we're going to see what happens with Sea Smoke if he'll still have that link to Leonor. The other dragon seeds in Fire and Blood include Hugh Hammer, who's a really fun character, Ulf the White, who's going to be played in the show by Tom Bennett, Nettles, who's also a really cool character, and Silver Dennis. Rhaenys tells Rhaenyra, there's no war so hateful to the gods as a war between kin and no war so bloody as a war between dragons. And Aemon walks up to the empty Iron Throne as thunder and lightning strike outside. He seems to be haunted by the storm in which Vagar killed Luke. Like everywhere he goes, he's going to feel the rumbling of storms in following him. They're like Charlie Brown with a rain cloud over his head. In fact, the death of Lucerus will give Aemon the nickname of Kinslayer, and it's something that Otto and Alicent will shame him for. Structurally, on this HBO series, I wonder if he's going to be kind of like a Jamie Lannister character, someone who's clearly an asshole, but an asshole that we all just kind of like. Also, he's got an eye patch. We see a group heading north through the snow, and I'm pretty sure this is Jaceris Jace making his case to the Starks. And we are going to meet Lord Cregan Stark, played by Tom Taylor. And yeah, we're probably going to see Winterfell on the show. That's going to be fun. Rhaenyra meets with someone else on this sand dune. Two dragons, two figures facing off. On the left, that's definitely Cyrax, Rhaenyra's golden dragon. And then on the right, that might be Sea Smoke, which could be Leonor in this moment, relinquishing Sea Smoke to her. Or it could be one of the dragon seeds who is now claiming it, the dragon. We get this overhead shot of Helena, bug girl. And I promise I'm going to stop making fun of her for the bug girl stuff. I only bring it up because season one hinted that she is a way more interesting character than you'd gather from reading the text. Like she seems to be a dreamer, like her ancestor Daenysa Dreamer, whose dream convinced her father to relocate the whole family from Valyria to Dragonstone and escape the doom of Valyria. And the same kind of dreaming tradition that affected Aegon the Conqueror, whose dream led him to Westeros. Many of the things Helena mumbled in season one under her breath ended up coming true for her family. Like, they'll have to close one eye, setting up Aemon one eye. And in particular, she loves insects and spiders, spiders being symbols of fate, and have just led many of us to think that she could also have green seer blood from the first men. Now, while Damon's daughters, Baela and Rihanna, don't really do that much in the text during the war, we do see a shot of Baela here on Dragonback, riding her dragon moon dancer, kind of screaming like her mother, Lyanna, did when we saw her in season one. Meanwhile, her sister, Rihanna, hasn't bonded with a dragon yet as of season one, episode 10, but we'll see in this second season. Quick shot of a soldier from House Bracken drawing his sword. You can tell from the red stallion on the gold field. Remember, season one included that duel between the young William Blackwood and the bully he stabbed to death, Jarrell Bracken, at Storm's End for Rhaenyra's hand, and Fire and Blood was actually kind of the reverse, with different character names, like Lord Samuel Blackwood defeated Sir Amos Bracken. George R. R. Martin loves to do this, like name characters with similarly sounding names intentionally, and the show did the switch, I think, to suggest that the HBO depiction of events can twist history on a dime. The show has not wanted us to forget about these two families. In season one, episode six, the small council brings up the land dispute where House Bracken annexed land from House Blackwood. In episode 9, we learn of House Bracken swearing allegiance to Aegon II. So this feud between the Blackwoods and the Brackens goes way back, and it's going to turn an ugly head during the Civil War, so don't sleep on it. There's a quick shot of Helena being grabbed with a knife to her throat. Yes, this is part of the blood and cheese moment. I'm going to get to that more in the spoiler dungeon. As I will, this shot of Sir Eric Cargill, or maybe his twin brother, Sir Eric Cargill, swinging a sword in a bedchamber, probably locking swords with their brother. In season 1, Eric helped Rhaenyra escape King's Landing and brought her Viserys' crown. Eric Eric's brother Sir Arik remains loyal to Alicent and Aegon II. And yeah, the confusion over their names and their twin likenesses isn't an accident. We'll talk about it later. The trailer ends with these three rapid succession battle shots. Aemond on Dragonback riding Vagar, Rhaenyra on Dragonback on Cyrax, I think from a different scene, and then Aemond's massive dragon Vagar flying overhead. The glory shot of this trailer, full struck in its aged wings. And while it's meant to show off their VFX power at HBO, the edit of this shot is so weird. Like we don't see where the dragon is going and it just cuts at this random shot. And it really just seems like they're trying to obscure what he is flying toward, who else is in this battle and where it is. But I think we are seeing the Battle of Rook's Rest. But before I get to spoiler dungeon to go into that, my favorite thing about House of the Dragon and Fire and Blood is the way this story is compiled from unreliable narrators, witnesses with only part of the story. Notice how some of the more pointed conversations in this HBO series occur when the characters are in private quarters. So the maesters leave the room and then suddenly they start talking about dreams and visions and dark motivations and things that one character know that the other character doesn't know. Yet we have not seen Mushroom on the series. And my theory is that the salacious gospel of Mushroom is meant to be us, the viewers, the social media fandom, the salacious bloodthirsty masses who tune into these HBO series at our own peril as we 
want blood and horrific violence. And then we go online and we fill the gaps in the historical record with the most exciting headcanon we can think of. And this gives the show more room to add some more interesting inner thoughts and motivations from these characters that the maesters who wrote Fire and Blood would not know about because they weren't there to see. Okay, so quickly, let's go into spoiler dungeon. This is for book readers and then I guess for people who just don't care either way. Blood and cheese. So in season one, we met Mizaria, the spy master, who in Fire and Blood, Damon orders to hire two assassins to sneak into the Red Keep. There's Blood, who had served under Damon in the King's Watch previously, and Cheese, a rat catcher who knows several passageways in and out of the Red Keep. We saw young Rhaenyra sneak out of one of these passageways on her big night out in season one, and there were some curious close-ups of rats throughout the Red Keep throughout season one, and I'm pretty sure that's setting up this big red wedding size moment in season two. So Blood and Cheese on Damon's orders, sneak into the Red Keep, bind and gag Alicent, and take Helena by a knife and tell her that they're there to take a son for her son. And they tell her which of her two sons that she had with Aegon II to spare and which to kill. And Helena says, take me. And they're like, no, it has to be a son. And she goes, okay, then the younger son, Maelor. But then Blood instead beheads the other son, the older one, Jaehaerys. This is gonna send Helena into a deep depression. And then obviously it just escalates everything. And they order all the rat catchers in King's Landing to be killed. So the place just gets infested with rats. And then they just gotta bring in a ton of cats. But I hope on the show, this isn't the end of the character Helena because if they are making her a dreamer or a green seer, maybe there's some other fate for her beyond this. And I think this blood and cheese moment is coming soon, folks, because there's only gonna be eight episodes of the season. And rumor has it, episode two is gonna include the battle of the Cargill brothers, Sir Eric versus Sir Arik, when Sir Arik sneaks in a dragonstone disguised as his twin brother, Sir Eric, and the two end up in a duel and then die in each other's arms because they love each other. In Fire and Blood, Grandmaster Munkin says that Arik's mission was to kill Rhaenyra and end the rebellion, but Mushroom says it was to kill Rhaenyra's bastard sons, Jace and Joff, in retaliation of what happened to Helena and Jaehaerys. So where is the season headed? Based on the scale of the battle and the way Rhaenys is framed in this trailer with the big line about gods punishing battles among kin, I think the big climax of season two is gonna be Rook's Rest. Sir Kristen Cole marches the greens to Rook's Rest in the Crownlands and Rhaenys flies out with Melis to help Lord Staunton. Aegon II shows up on Sunfire. Aemon shows up on Vagar. The three dragons fight it in the air. They become entangled. Rhaenys dies, burnt to an unrecognizable degree, Melee's dies, Aegon suffers severe burns, and Sunfire is rendered flightless. So while King Aegon is incapacitated, Aemond steps up as regent and protector of the realm. This would be a major realignment to end the season on, and I just think they have the budget for like one major dragon battle per season. These eight episodes are coming summer 2024. This is one of the last videos I'm shooting before I officially leave for my paternity leave. I pre-taped a lot of fun videos that you are really gonna enjoy, so you'll still see me on this channel channel like twice a week or so. Jessica Clemens and others on this channel are covering for me while I'm out. And thank you so much to everyone for your well wishes. Follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.